All right, so I have my first ZF 8HP 7D to overhaul. Uh, came to me over the counter, and it's probably out of, I'm thinking, 2015, 2016 Dodge Charger. I'm not really 100% sure. Um, but they brought me the unit. Uh, the same gentleman that I'm, was helping out with the uh, NAG 1s uh, also brought me uh, the overhaul kit with pistons and the friction module for more uh, performance. It has uh, performance clutches and choline steels. So we're really not going to find much wrong with this, but um, I agreed to do it because this is my first one and I would love to get the experience with the uh, eight speeds. Um, I've been doing some research, watching uh, a bunch of videos. I actually uh, bought my ATSG book and it doesn't really seem that bad to do. Um, but what we're going to do today, you also need special tools once the gear train is out, which uh, um, I have. Uh, he brought me those as well. Uh, but what we're going to do today is going to go over the uh, outside of the case. Uh, we're going to take the pan down, take the valve body out, take the pump out, probably slide the gear train out. And then at that point, um, I'm going to stop there and then continue probably in the next day or so with taking the gear train to play. Because uh, I do have other things uh, going on, got a lot going on here. Um, but I do have a chance to do something with it, so I wanted to get started. I got the transmission here, honestly, for a couple of weeks. Uh, so let me get a little closer, and we're going to go over first, again, um, the case. There is a pressure tap. you got your cool line fittings. Uh, so we'll go over all that, and then we'll start uh, tearing this apart. All right, so let me get a little closer, and we'll get started. Okay, so on this side of the case, we have uh, the only pressure tap fitting on the unit, and that is marked in Boston a case PZT, and this is for converter charge. It would indicate converter charge. Here's your cooler line fittings. You have your from and two cooler line fittings. All right, here is the linkage for the um, park release. Okay, this is uh, ship by wire. So your part release cable linkage would hook up to that. And I've seen this one time, uh, one of these eight speeds. Uh, I had a few of these. Uh, didn't really do much work on them, but what I did, uh, a couple of them, they came from body shops that I do work for, and they wanted us to fill the transmission for them because uh, they weren't sure how to do it. And with it being low on fluid, um, the car, we had to actually release it to, to uh, get it inside the shop. Uh, but with the low on fluid, uh, the car wouldn't come out of park. So we manually released it and got it in, inside the shop, filled it, and then everything was okay. All right, and on this side here, uh, this actually is your fill and check plug right here, and your mechatronic sleeve. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start uh, by taking the pan down and taking the valve body off. All right, so let me just uh, All right, so I'm going to start by uh, taking off the uh, extension housing. All right, and there's a, a rear seal that I actually have out already because I just wanted to see what, it, what I'm dealing with and what it looked like. I have the rear seal here, but there's a, a snap ring um, that holds the entire gear train in, but we're not gonna take that snap ring out yet. the rear seal right uh, best way to get this out is um, you know usually with a seal puller is fine uh, and then we got a, a stamp ring and it looks like a, a little shim right back here but that is going to stay in for now all right now I'm going to flip it and take the pan down all right those are t40s Okay. 
Okay, pan and filter is in one. Okay, so this is just, uh, actually this one is a all-wheel drive, but this is just a valve body right here. Okay, if this, uh, nowadays, you know, the cars have the start-stop feature when you come to a red light. All right, but this particular one do, does not have it. If it did, behind the valve body would be like a, a cylinder or an accumulator. And that's called a HIS pump, H-I-S, Hydraulic Impulse Storage. And what that does is it keeps the clutch packs charged with oil when the engine shuts off. Okay, you'll only find that pump or that accumulator on cars that have the start-stop feature. Okay, this obviously does not have it, so there is no pump. All right, so first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna take the T40 bolt out and pull up the output speed sensor. Okay, there's the output speed sensor. Then we're going to take the other three out. out of the park solenoid, uh, park uh, piston I mean, the rod. All right, here is the lever again that pulls up. And let's flip this thing over. All right, so this is your Megatronic unit. Let me, um, let me just get a different, uh, different angle here so you can see this much better. Uh, just give me one second. All right. So here's your input speed sensor. This is kind of like your park sensor. There's a magnet here. There's also a magnet um, on the rotating lever of the linkage, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, and here is your output speed sensor here. And of course, these come out. These are your in and out uh, suctions for the, for the filter. These little tubes come out here. And here is your park uh, piston. Again, uh, unit in and out of park right here. Okay, so let's put this aside very carefully. Uh, okay, let me uh, switch angles once again onto the case. I want to show you the magnet on that rotating lever. And then um, 
I'm going to release the beat, the, the beat two two. Take that out and take the pump out. Okay. All right. So on this here, here's the magnet on the linkage that works with the park sensor on the mechatronic unit. Uh, basically, that tells it when it's in and out of park. All right. So here is the B feed tube. All right. We're going to take that out. And now we're going to spin this around and take the pump bolts out. Alright, now these uh, bolts are aluminum, so they say to replace them. And, uh, putting this back together. Oh, you know what? Before we take these out, there is an O-ring for the converter. All right, that's that right there. All right, now let's take these bolts out. should come out with very little effort. All right, so we're going to pry very gently, like in this area. Not really on the ceiling surfaces because there's no pump gasket, so I'm going to do it in this area here. And this should come out again with very, very little effort. Alright, so you have your A clutch. Let's push this back a little here. Alright, so you have your A clutch is inside here, and this is your B piston on the outside. And this thing I forgot to actually mention, this uses four planetary gear sets. Uh, pretty much in line P1 through P4. All right, so next, I would like to take out the B clutch. Okay, and this stack up ends, since the piston is up here, ends in the wave steel. We started with the pressure plate. So 
this is the P1 ring gear. Okay, it has the B clutch. So now what I gotta actually do is I'm gonna take the snap ring out and then I'm gonna have to stand this thing up on the hole in the bench because they don't want you to pull it out this way because they think you, will be, you may damage the cylinder. So uh, let's take the snap ring out and then we'll see how the heck I'm gonna do that. so I can move this, okay, and I want to get a different set of snap ring pliers for that, okay, that's good, all right, here is the snap ring, and there should be smaller one. Okay. And the shim. Right there. Okay. Alright. So now the next step is to pull this thing out. So let me just uh, pause this thing because I'm going to have to move some stuff around and stand this thing up and I'll probably have to get up on top of the bench and pull it out with both hands. This thing can be heavy. All right, so just give me uh, a minute here. All right, so I'm going to be lifting this thing whole assembly out of the case. All right, got a couple of rigs on it. Okay, let me just uh, switch angles. All right, so here is the whole gear train from input shaft to the output shaft. All right, now the next we got to get this snap ring out of this cylinder here, and this thing is very fragile, so there's special tools, okay, that are needed. All right, so this one here, for instance, it would go over it if it's perfect. All right, and now the snap ring opening is here, and what they want you to do is go 180 degrees uh, to get the snap ring out, and you'll actually be prying against this here. So uh, the next step is to do that, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, possibly tomorrow morning we can continue on this, but I do have other things that I have to get going on. Um, so I'm just going to stop here right now, but we're going to continue again, like I said, um, uh, in a couple of days. Uh, I just wanted to get this apart. And we will continue, so I will be back. All right, so we're gonna continue with the teardown of this ZF8HP70. Um, and we're gonna open the pump and we're gonna take the gear train apart. All right, as far as the clutch pack goes, the clutch packs, uh, in the pump you have your A, 
clutch pack, which we'll look at. Here is your B, which sits on top. This is your B uh, clutch piston. And within the gear train, you have your E clutch, C, and D. And planetary gear sets, you have four, and you have P1 through P4. So we're going to look at all that. And I have my special tools ready to go. Take this uh, gear train apart. All right, so I'm going to get a little closer onto the gear train because we're going to start with that first. All right, so let me get a little closer and we will get started. Okay, so first we're going to take off the P1 ring gear. Okay, now again, you need the tool to protect the very thin wall aluminum connecting shell. All right, now, the opening of the snap ring is right here. And what they want you to do, actually, is they want you to pry 180 degrees from the opening of the snap ring. Okay, the snap ring does have, goes into kind of like some locks, if you will, to keep the snap ring from turning. All right, so we're gonna put our tool on, and this is this uh, tool kit here. And we're gonna go 180 degrees, so the opening is here. Okay, so we're gonna get this snap ring up here. And that comes right out. See, that's what the snap ring looks like. Okay, I'm gonna take the shell, uh, the tool off. And of course, uh, no damage to the drum. Okay, now we're gonna take off the P1 planet. This is the P1, P2 sun gear. All right, now the spline end is gonna face up. Okay, there's really nothing here, but all splines here. Okay, so that's gonna face up. All right, now we're gonna take out the input shaft along with the P2 planet. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And right here, this here is like a magnetic ring that the input sensor reads through the connecting shell. All right, so you want to be very careful with this. I want to actually put this here. All right, so that was the P2 planet. Now we have the P2 ring gear. And P3 sun gear. Okay, now we're going to lift out the connecting shell. So now we're going to put this one aside. For a moment. Alright, because we have to take uh, the back of this apart. Alright, and now we have our smaller connecting shell. And this houses the P3 planet. And then we're going to take out the E clutch and the C clutch. Alright, but again, we need our tool for the connecting shell. All right, perfect fit. Okay, so again, the snap ring opening is here, and I'm gonna go 180 degrees so what I'm actually going to do, there's um, a small hole here, and I'm going to pry the snap ring out, and I'm going to get my screwdriver, a uh, small screwdriver, into this hole and pry the snap ring up to get the snap ring out. Good. 
I'm gonna fry it up. this thing around. There it is. Okay, so the ring will come off. No damage to the drum. Okay, so now I'm going to lift out the P3 planet. connecting shell. Here is the uh, hub for the uh, D-clutch. All right, so this is extremely light, extremely fragile. So you want to put this thing aside here. Okay, so this is a big like uh, sun shell. And inside here is the P3 ring gear, the um, E-clutch and the C-clutch. Okay, so we're going to take that apart now. Now we got a snap ring uh, holding the uh, P3 ring gear in, and then we got another snap ring, and we'll be able to take the drums out. Okay, so we're going to do that now. Okay, I just wanted to reposition this uh, big connecting shell so it wasn't just laying over here. All right, so we're going to take this snap ring out. P3 ring gear. Okay, so that'll stay. And then there is another snap ring. Okay, and also, and then go there. So this this is like the P4 sun gear, this big thing. Now we're gonna lift out the E clutch. Okay. And I'm gonna lift out the C clutch. What's left? This just uh, giant sun gear here for P4. Okay. Now we're going to bring back this here. All right, let's get these out of the way. All right, now we gotta take the park gear off to get the uh, D-clutch out. All right, so there is a, a, a locking ring here with tabs. So we gotta bend the tabs uh, up, and then we gotta turn the locking ring until it lines up and comes out, and then the park gear will come out, and then we can push the assembly out. All right, so. Do that. There's usually four tabs bent, and I I did two of them already. All right, let me just get a different screwdriver here so I can bend these things up. Okay. Turn this as I just did, it'll come right out. Okay, and now 
the fork gear will come out. Let me just get this from turning. And now we can push this up through. Okay, so now in this connecting shell, we have the P4 ring gear. Okay, here is your very fragile connecting shell. Here is your P4 planet. Okay, and we have the exciter ring that uh, the output speed sensor reads. Okay, and now let's just take these Clutches out here, let me just turn my light on. Okay, let's see. All right, so this is the D. Look, um, like I said, uh, everything is probably going to be okay because they just want this built more performance than anything. Uh, I don't think there was really much of a problem with it. You got a couple of rings back here, okay, that come in the kit that I'm going to change. And the way you get this D clutch apart, there is no snap ring. So you have to push down on this piston and then you have to turn it you have to hit it maybe with a uh, like a punch and a hammer to turn the piston to line it up just like how we had to get this this ring out you know you had to turn it so it comes out and then this will come apart okay so that is the d clutch all right so put that aside All right, and this is the E clutch here. So this we gotta push down and take the snap ring out. And you gotta be careful because that could, could fly. And on the C, uh, you have to um, put something uh, to keep this from moving down uh, so you can push the piston down to get the snap ring out or I believe the whole thing will move down. Right, but I'll probably wind up taking those apart and we'll see what those look like. So let's get the pump here. Have right, a we'll look at this real quick. This pump is chain driven. All right, so here again, here is the B clutch. Okay, now the B piston, uh, you can get out in a couple of ways. You can blow air through here and it'll pop up, um, but what I did was I managed to get um, a screwdriver uh, on this tab and I was able to push the piston up really without, you know, scarring anything up, so that actually worked okay. In one video that I was watching on this transmission, they blew air in here and popped it up, and another one they actually used, um, a small screwdriver was able to pop, but just a, a, a bit to get it to move and then, you know, I worked it around. All right, so there is that. That is the B. Okay, and you also have another apply ring, O-ring that's got to be changed here and here for the B. So we're going to change all that as well. Okay, uh, here is the A clutch hub. Um, let's see, where is the opening? I have the split ring out of this thing already that holds the piston down. Yeah, it kind of goes like that. So this whole thing is going to lift out. Alright, so you have your 
pressure plate on top, your wave seal on the bottom. On the B clutch, it's actually the opposite. You're going to end in the wave seal, so the wave seal will sit against the piston. Okay, here is uh, the return spring and the piston. Let me just pull the piston out. clutch and the reason why I wanted to take that out to show you now here are your bolts you can take out to separate the halves uh, to see the expose the pump the pump actually is chain driven this is a hub right here okay that splines into the converter and this pump is uh, chain driven so you got one, two, three, four, five, and six bolts here. All right, so let's take that apart. Let me actually just get set up for that. Let me get my sockets and stuff. So I will be back uh, in, in one second. Okay, uh, T40. Technically, when you uh, take this apart, uh, especially the, uh, the bolts that hold the pump into the case, you know, they want you to replace them with new ones because they're aluminum. So the guy that I'm doing the unit for brought me a, brought me a bag of them. I believe it technically is supposed to replace those too, but he didn't bring me those, but I got to call him anyway. All right, so we're going to lift this off. Might have to pry up a little bit or something on it. All right, let's do this. Okay. Here is the cover. You got a bearing, front seal, pump o ring. Okay, and here is the chain driven pump. So now we want to lift both of these out at the same time. There's a couple of O-rings in here. This will come right out. But let's see how we're going to get this pump out. I'm going to change and your very high volume pump is this little thing right here okay so this is your pump put that aside all right this is this here I'm gonna wash this up I'm gonna change this ring here for the B there's a bushing in here also there also is a um, a bushing kit, the company that puts the, one of the companies that puts the ring kit, uh, that puts these, this tool out, um, GFX, I believe they're in Miami, um, also supplies a, a bushing kit if needed uh, for this unit. Because there's a, a video uh, on that company demonstrating their tools. Okay. 
right, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm just going to put you guys on hold for a minute. I'm going to open up the E clutch. I got to go over. I'm going to try the foot press. If not, I'll have to use um, something else. And I got to again push this down and try to get the clip out of here. So um, I'm going to try that, and I will be back uh, in a minute or two. Okay, so I got the um, uh, the E and the C clutch apart. Uh, came right apart, no problem. All right, so here is the uh, ring. All right, I'm going to take the piston out. This is uh, here's the balance piston and the regular piston that's going to be changed. All right, they came in the uh, they come in the kits. spring and you know, these actually are burnt here is your wave steel okay and the clutches the steels have the inner teeth and the clutch have the outer teeth but all these are going to be replaced because they had uh, I'll show you the kit I don't know if I showed it before but um, I got the kit like with the choline steels and everything like that the same thing now you have to put something across the bottom here okay but I, I went right in the foot press it came right out okay the snap ring pretty thick got to be careful it doesn't go flying all right so that'll come out all right the C clutch looks also like it's burnt as well okay and the reason why they want you to support it from the bottom is because once that snap ring comes out, here's the wave steel. Once that snap ring comes out, this will drop. There's a couple of rings here that are going to be changed. Okay, and it'll sit up here. There we go, that's in. doesn't look that bad to do. Actually, all in all, the, the, the transmission really is, is not that bad. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to open up that uh, D clutch. All right, so um, again, with this, let's get the clutch back to here. Um, I'm going to put this in another press that I have and I'm going to press this down and hit this over to line, to line everything up so the piston will come out and I can take it apart. Okay, so just give me um, a couple of minutes with that. Okay, uh, alright, I will be right back. Okay, so I put this in uh, a different kind of press uh, that I screwed it down to push the baffle down. All right, and then I just kind of hit it. Uh, there's a couple of holes in here. All right, so I hit it with this and a hammer in a clockwise position until everything lined up, you know, was clear of it, and then it, it comes right out. So this is what it looks like, and you just got to hit it, and, and there's no snap ring, so... All right, so then that, and we have this, and then the piston. Okay, now there is another piston in this D clutch that's riveted. Okay, so this of course is going to stay. So again, this is a ZF8 HP70. It was my first one to tear down. Uh, now I'm going to, oh, you know what, I want to show you the, the kit that the guy uh, uh, got me. Uh, he supplied me with all, with, the, uh, 
with the pistons that I have. And let me just show you. Not that bad to do. Of course, I uh, prepared myself for about a week and a half. I did some pretty extensive uh, research on this. Okay. All right. So this is the this is the kit. So we have all uh, choline steels here. All right, this is the A clutch. I was playing around with this already. Give you a new uh, pressure plate. So this is the uh, choline steel and, and high performance clutch kit, and I have the overhaul kit as well with pistons. Now here is, here is the overhaul kit. So I'm going to get started on this because I want to try to get this done today because he is asking for it. So I told him. All right. So again, 8HP70 uh, teardown video. I'm hoping after this uh, he has a few more to do and I will hopefully film another one. I like to do a couple of these in a row, you know, so I really get to know them. All right, and I guess that is about it for now. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.